Hi, this is Mark Berkey from Berkey Academy, and in this video, I want to start a series of three or four videos where I talk about how do you calculate the distance between two points on the Earth's surface. And these formulas we usually call great circle distance formulas because you have to go along some kind of circle to go between two points, the shortest distance, uh, if you live on a sphere like we do on Earth. In this video, I'm not going to actually talk, go through any of the various uh, versions of great circle distance formulas, but in this video, I want to prepare you and make sure you really understand what a great circle is and what a great circle distance formula might do, how it might work. So I'm going to set the groundwork here, and I'm not going to use any fancy mathematics. All the math you need to understand everything in this video is basic trigonometry, but I'm going to review uh, that idea as well. In future videos, in order to really understand what's going on in those videos, you're also going to need uh, to know some linear algebra in addition to some um, trigonometry. So. I'm going to keep it simple in this video to make it accessible to everyone so that you can understand what a great circle distance is all about. So the first thing I want to do is talk about why uh, using a standard distance formula is wrong, a Cartesian distance formula. Talk about what longitude and latitude mean. Visualize great circles. Uh, and I'm going to do a lot of uh, different plots here that are going to be fun. And then I'm going to show you how great circle distances actually function, how these formulas actually work. What's the engine at the heart of them? And the engine at the heart is really finding the angle between the two points represented as vectors. And all that means is if we draw a line between the center of the Earth, the core of the Earth, and, and that point on the surface, and we do that for two points and we look at the angle, we'll solve a simple problem where we look at calculating the distance between those two points using the angle, okay? So, first thing, why would a Cartesian distance formula not work? Well, let's look at a, a Cartesian distance uh, formula here between two points. Suppose we have a point that's at x equals 5 and y equals 15 x equals 10, y equals 10, to get the distance between those two points, then here's the standard kind of distance formula. Now, if even if you have uh, a point in 3D space, you'd use the same distance formula, you would just add a z2 minus z1 squared there, and we're going to look at the, an example of that later on. So in this case, you'd say, well, x2 minus x1, 10 minus 5 squared is 25. Uh, y2 minus y1, that's minus 5 squared, that's also 25, so we're looking at the square root of 50, so the distance between those two points is 7. That works on a Cartesian grid because each of these little tick marks on a Cartesian grid represents the same distance. The same distance whether we're going left or right or up and down, and they don't change, so they're all the same distance. And that's a requirement for this distance function in order to work. Now, why is that not going to work if we're looking at a sphere? Well, let's pick two points that we're going to look at on the Earth's sphere as an example. So here's Google Earth. And the two points I want to pick, let's, let's talk about longitude and latitude here for a moment. Longitude is measuring where east or west you are. So longitude is east and west, latitude is north and south. So the way I remember latitude, believe it or not, is there's a, a beer commercial for a Mexican beer, and they say, hey, you Americans, drink Mexican beer so you can change your attitude, or they say change your whole latitude. And what they mean is go from the U.S. south to change your latitude. So that's the way I remember. If that helps you, fine. If not, forget it. Just a joke. So longitude is east or west, latitude north and south. 
I'm going to pick a point that is on zero degrees longitude. And zero degrees longitude, we just have to pick some line up and down from which we're going to calculate how far east or west you are. And the point that we decided on, for some reason, is to call London zero degrees longitude. Now, when you hear about this, people will say it's Greenwich. It's the Greenwich Observatory, but that's basically London. So just remember, London, it's a little bit east of the center of London, but London, a line running from the North Pole through London, through to the South Pole, is going to be zero degrees longitude. Now, latitude measures how far north or south you are away from the equator. And the equator is roughly runs through here. And so the first point I want to pick, just to keep this simple, is zero degrees longitude. That means it's due south of London. And zero degrees latitude. That means it's on the equator. So our first point is going to be located somewhere here, kind of south of Ghana and, and a little bit west of this part of Africa over here. So this is approximately zero. And if you look down here at Google Earth, it will display the long longitude and latitude. And I'll try to get my cursor here to be pretty close to zero, zero. Okay, getting pretty close there. So right around in this area here so you can picture it. Now the other point I want to pick on the Earth's surface, I could pick any two points, but the other point I'm going to pick is going to be over here at 45 degrees east. So I want to go, this is uh, 45 degrees east. This is basically an eighth of the way around the the Earth from, from that point over there. So 45 degrees east. So if you look down at the bottom here, it will tell me that the longitude is about 45. Okay, right over here. And then I'm going to go up. I don't want to be on the equator. I'm going to go up into Russia. And I'm going to go up to 60 degrees latitude. So right around here. So this is a point that is somewhere northeast of where Moscow, Moscow is. Moscow is somewhere over here. So we're going to go over to 45 degrees longitude. So we're going east. And uh, 60 degrees latitude. We're going north. And typically this would be a positive longitude and a positive latitude by convention. Positive is east for longitude. Negative would be going west. So if you're in the United States your, uh, or Canada or Mexico, your longitude is negative. Um, but if you're in the northern hemisphere, your latitude will be positive. If you're in the southern hemisphere, your latitude is going to be negative. So let's not look at the Earth. Let's look at an abstract version of this. And um, I should have mentioned this before, <clears throat> this worksheet and I'll, I, what I'm working here to make these plots in is a program called Maple. And I will put a copy of this Maple spreadsheet and a PDF of it on my website, spatial.berkeyacademy.com. Now, spatial because this is a, to a spatial topic here. Now, here is, here is a sphere. And instead of making this sphere as large as the Earth, I'm going to make this sphere with a 1, a radius of 1. Now, why a radius of 1? Well, that makes all of our calculations a lot simpler. And then at the last moment, this is what all the great circle distance formulas do. They pretend we're on a sphere, a unit sphere, sphere with radius 1. And then at the last minute, they multiply by the radius. Now, if you multiply by the radius in kilometers, You'll get the distance in kilometers, miles, miles. You could also do feet or any other kind of units that you want. So here are these two points on the Earth's surface. This is the one that is 0 degrees longitude and 0 degrees latitude. This is the one that is 45 degrees longitude and 60 degrees latitude. Now, I have also gone ahead and converted these points into 
Cartesian coordinates in X, Y, Z space. So for example, this point that is at zero degrees longitude, zero degrees latitude, it is going to be one uh, away from the center on the x-axis. So this is the x-axis. It's going to be zero on the y-axis. So this is the y-axis going out this direction. So this is going to be one for the x-coordinate, zero for the y-coordinate, and it's going to be zero for the z because the z is going to tell us how far north or south we are if you're thinking about Cartesian coordinates. Longitude and latitude, instead of um, measuring in Cartesian coordinates, they measure angles. So it's how many degrees you are east or west and how many degrees you are north and south. So remember in a circle there are 360 degrees and so if you go over 45 degrees you have gone an eighth of the way around a circle. 90 degrees would be a quarter of the way around a circle, right? And here we've gone up 60 degrees, which is a sixth of the circle. So just looking at these points in three dimensions here, Why couldn't we just take those longitude and latitude uh, numbers for 0, 0, 0 degrees longitude and latitude, and 45 degrees 60? Why couldn't we just plug those into that same distance formula that we were working with over here and get the right answer? Well, remember, this formula depends on the fact that these um, distances on the grid are the same for X and Y. Now that's not true for longitude and latitude and let me let me tell you show you why a little more clearly. So remember what longitude and latitude are doing is is telling you an angle over and an angle up. And so let me let's first look at uh, latitude. So latitude is if you think about this circle, this is a great circle. A great circle just means we're looking at a circle that goes all the way around the Earth and the center of the circle is at the center of the Earth. So down in the Earth's core here. When you think about latitude, what you're doing is going up around this great circle a certain number of degrees. So if you're at 45 degrees, that means you've gone an eighth of the way around the complete circle. 90 degrees, you've gone one quarter of the way around the whole circle, and that would put you at the North Pole. If you go negative 90 degrees, that means you're down at the South Pole. Now, the interesting thing about latitude is that every time you go one degree latitude, since there's 360 degrees in a, in a complete circle, every time you go one degree latitude, you're going one three hundred and sixtieth of the way around the Earth, going either north or south. So you're always going for one degree latitude, one three hundred and sixtieth of the way around the Earth. So what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> Since one degree latitude always takes you one, six, one three sixtieth of the way around the Earth, that always changes about 69 miles. So a change of one degree latitude is a distance. It's always 69, de 69 miles per degree. However, the problem is with longitude. Longitude takes you a certain angle east or west. Now if you're on the equator, if you happen to be sitting right on the equator, then one degree longitude is also 69 miles, 69.1 miles. But what if you're up here north of Moscow? How far is that distance going to be? 
Well, let's look at the different uh, latitude circles that you would see on a globe. So this is the latitude circle that is the equator. And as you can see, as you go around the equator one degree, you are going 1 360th of the way around the Earth. But if you're up here in Moscow, then what that one degree change in longitude tells you is that you're going 1 360th of the way around a circle, but it's a much smaller circle. It's not one of these great circles that goes all the way around the Earth. So you can't treat one degree longitude as being any kind of distance, as a distance formula like this requires you to have. So what are we going to do if we want to find the distance between these two points? Well, well what we want to do is find a great circle that connects those two points. Let me try to tilt this to where, and, and this great circle tells us that if we drive or fly right along or above the surface of the earth, uh, how far along that sphere we're going to go to get the shortest distance. Now, even if we didn't have this problem where longitudes were less than 69 miles, unless you're at the equator, even if we didn't have that problem, if you use a standard distance formula, what that would do is take you on a straight line through the Earth, right? Not around the Earth, but through the Earth. So what are we going to try to do when we use a great circle distance formula? Well, what we try to do is here are those same two points. Let me make the, this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see, especially if you're on the smaller screen watching this. We want to take those two points and draw lines from the center of the Earth. So we're, we're calling these vectors. A vector is just a line that has a certain direction and a certain length. And the length here, since for right now we're going to assume that the Earth is a unit sphere. It has a radius of 1. So this vector is going to have a length of 1 going from the center of the Earth to this point. And this vector, so this is the one that's at 0, 0, longitude and latitude. And this vector also has a length of 1. It's just pointing in a different direction. The way great circle distance formulas work is to try to figure out what is the angle between these two vectors if we line them up in such a way that we're looking at a great sphere, and as long as I can figure out that angle, then we can figure out how, by what proportion of the entire circumference of the Earth we're going around the Earth. So, for example, if this angle was 90 degrees from here to here, we would know that we have to go one quarter of the way around the circumference of the Earth. And, okay, the distance is just one quarter of the circumference of the Earth. But this angle is not going to be 90 degrees. It's going to be something less. So how do we figure that out? Well, let's just visualize this. So don't worry about all this math right now. All this math is doing is, is figuring out um, what that great circle looks like that goes between those two points. So here it is. Now actually we don't have to figure out that great circle in order to, to do this, but I just I just figured out the great circle so we could visualize what it looks like. Alright, and once we get that lined up, let's look at that angle. It's going to be something close to 90 degrees, but less than 90 degrees. Okay, so how could we actually go about tackling and solving this problem. Well, once we get this sphere lined up in this way, what I want to do is form just a regular triangle and then we can use some basic trigonometry to try to figure out what this angle is. And once we figure out the angle, 
we can figure out what portion of 360 degrees that is and then multiply that proportion by the circumference of the earth and we'll, ha we'll have our answer okay so in order to draw a triangle we know that this side is 1 because we're assuming that the radius of the earth is 1 for now and that this one is also 1 so we need to figure out the distance now the straight line distance it's kind of hard to figure out this directly until we know that angle then it becomes easy easy so let's just draw this triangle we know that it's isosceles because those two uh, those two lengths are both one let's figure out what this other side would be well in this case what we can do is we can use the same distance formula before because we know um, we know as long as well as long as we know the X and XYZ coordinates of those points so what I've done is converted those longitudes and latitudes into X Y and Z points as as we saw before so and and that's one of the tricky parts of doing this let's just assume we've already done this and our point that's on the equator at zero degrees longitude is a point one one zero right because it is one for X zero for Y and zero for Z and our other point that is northeast of northeast of Moscow is at X equals let's look at this so you can you can see this X equals point three five three six so between point three and four you can see there y equals 0.3536 as well <clears throat> and what's z how high up on the on the sphere is that point what's well, between 0.8 and 0.9 and I calculated that to be 0.866 so I'm going to talk about how we figure out uh, those coordinates in the next video so given that we have those coordinates what do we let me just do one other visualization here let me let me draw that vector in there for you so you can see this triangle so here are our original two points um, and the great circle that connects them and so what we want to do is just make a triangle where this third leg of the triangle we're pretending we're back in two dimensions and we, again what we want to do is our target is to find that angle so let's just draw this triangle on a piece of paper and figure out again this sides one this sides one we can calculate that distance let's draw it on a piece of paper so here's what you get when you draw that on a piece of paper the two sides the two radii are one and what's the distance between or what's the length of the third side basically well if these are our two points 100 0, 0, and 0 0.35 0 0.35 0 0.866 we can use the standard distance formula to get the straight line distance between those two points since these are Cartesian coordinates we can use the distance formula and the distance we get is a little bit bigger than one so 1.137 so now we can draw a triangle now let's imagine that we just live on that great circle and we want to go around that great circle to get from this point to this point and we want to know what that distance is again we first have to figure out this angle so how can we do that well using some basic trigonometry what we can do is make a right triangle now there are other ways to do this but right triangles are easier to work with so let's drop a perpendicular line down and let's cut this 1.137 side in half and that's going to give us a side over here that's half of that 0.5685 and if we just analyze this triangle we know that this side is 1 we know that this side is 0.5685 and what we're looking for is 
half of the red angle. And then we're going to multiply it by 2. So let's draw in what we're actually going to be calculating here. So we're going to be finding half of that angle. We're going to multiply it by 2 to get the red angle. So what kind of trigonometric trick could we use to find how many degrees that angle is? Well, remember so katoa that sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. And in this case, we know the opposite side from this angle we're looking for and the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the angle that's across from the 90 degree angle. So we have the opposite and the hypotenuse, so it's the sine that we're interested in using here. So let's take you through the calculations here. The sine of this angle T, which is actually half of the red angle, is equal to 0.5685 divided by 1. Um, so the sine of the angle is 0.5685. So what we want is the angle. So how do you get the angle back? Well, you use the inverse of the sine or the arc sine. On your calculator, this might be sine with a minus 1 for sine inverse. So let's calculate that. On my calculator, I'm going to put um, 0.5685, and then I'm going to hit the inverse sine key. And I get that that angle is about 34.65 degrees. So 34.65 degrees. But that's really half the angle we want, which is the red angle, which is the angle between the two points on the surface of the Earth. And so multiply that by 2, and we're going to get, and I'm not going to round, so I get 69.3 uh, uh, degrees, 69.3 degrees. And so that tells us the red angle that if we're going along the great circle between these two points, that the angle between those two points is 69.3 degrees. So if this is 69.3 degrees, how far of the way around the whole circle is that? Well, we just need to take the 69.3, divide it by the number of degrees in a whole circle, and we're going to get what percent of the way around the whole Earth we're going, and we're almost done. Thank you for your patience. So that's 19.25% of the way around the whole Earth. And now multiply that proportion, 0.1925, times the circumference of the whole Earth. And I'm going to use 24,875 miles as one of various measures you can get for the circumference of the Earth. 0.1925 times 24,875, and the distance between those two points is going to be about 4,788 miles, point, uh, 44 or so. That's how a great circle distance formula works. So let's recap briefly what we just did and why we did all this. So we talked about how you, you shouldn't use a standard Cartesian distance formula plugging in longitudes and latitudes in order to get the distance for two reasons. Because while a latitude is, uh, one degree latitude is always about 69 miles, one degree longitude, longitude is just an angle. And if you're on the equator, one degree longitude is about 69 miles, but if you're not on the equator, it just tells you one degree you're going a certain number of degrees angle on a smaller circle. But it doesn't work unless it's a great circle, okay? So 
we said suppose you could convert these points into Cartesian points then if you draw vectors to those two points on the surface of a unit sphere as long as you can figure out that angle then you can figure out the distance along a great sphere which in the great sphere has the, the uh, same circumference as the earth as long as you can figure out that angle you can figure out the distance along a great sphere that ends this video what I'm going to do in the next couple of videos is show you what is the mathematics what is the engine that's really behind several different great circle distance formulas that you'll see the basic idea is the same we want to find this angle and then we want to figure out what proportion of a great circle that angle represents one complication is though if that angle gets to be very 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 small then sometimes you want to use a different formula that will give you a more accurate answer and that's called the Haversine formula so in the next video we'll, we'll derive the great circle distance formula how it's used in practice and then we'll derive the Haversine formula this is Berkey Academy signing out thanks for sticking with me to the end if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them in the section below otherwise stay tuned for the next video